Good morning, everybody. Thank you for staying. My name is Dennis Shia. I'm the Director of Social Medicine and Community Health at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. And I'm here today to talk to you about medical legal partnerships, how, why you should love a lawyer. Does anybody know who, what a medical legal partnership is? No hands. One hand. Great. So I'm in the right place. So a couple of disclosures. I'm the chair-elect of the Social EM section for ASAP, which means I'm interested in social determinants. I'm a former legal services attorney. You should always know when you're talking to an attorney. And I'm poor. So when you hear a lawyer calling, you might feel nauseated, angry, fearful. Oh my god, I'm going to get sued. That's a lot of money. But very few of you are going to feel like you're in a happy place. You feel love or you feel excitement. I'm here to change that. Let's start with a patient. Let's call Hannah. I met Hannah a couple years ago in the emergency department. She was brought in on an involuntary hold of 5150 from the housing authority after threatening to take all her Seroquel. As I walked into the room to talk to Hannah, she was holding her face, crying, saying, I do not want to become homeless. She had a Section 8 voucher, and she was about to lose it. When I asked her what happened, she said that a few weeks ago, she had received a notice of termination in the mail. She had been to the housing authority for the, every day the past month, but no one would pay attention to her. Finally, she got so frustrated that she threatened to take her Seroquel, and all of a sudden, she had all the attention she didn't want. At that point, you might say, good Lord, Hannah doesn't need a psychiatrist. She needs a housing expert who can help her. We talked to social work, but social work was only able to offer her housing resources if she became homeless. No one could prevent her pending homelessness. That's when a lawyer was consulted. You might say, there are lawyers who do good things. Really? There are, in fact, many lawyers who are funded nationally to do good things. At this point, I see a light bulb going off. Some of you may start feeling a little tinge of love for lawyers, but many of you trust tough customers. Lawyers can help with many things. Public benefits, employment conflicts, family law, such as domestic violence issues, even immigration issues. These are some of the things that affect all of our patients and affect their health. And you may say, slow down. I'm an ER doc. How do I identify these issues? I have a simple solution for you. Being a lawyer, you just have to think when two people have beef, when there's a conflict. So for example, if a patient doesn't have health insurance because they haven't applied, they need to apply for health insurance. However, if they've applied and someone has said, no, you don't qualify, now they have a conflict. They have beef with who's denying them. And that's when a lawyer is appropriate. So how do you get a patient to a lawyer? You could hand them a list of resources, but like with all of our discharge paperwork, we often see patients drop these on the way out of the department to their vehicles, to often to the night. So it's probably not super effective. Instead, if you could call a consult, such as through a medical legal partnership, where you have a lawyer on call, just like how you have a cardiologist or a GI specialist, that would be a much cleaner handoff. So how does this work? Medical legal partnerships basically involve different levels of engagement with local legal partners. You can have them on referral basis, at times coming to the hospital, or even based on site full time. Obviously, there's a lot of details here we can't get into in terms of confidentiality, data sharing, but your lawyers can deal with that. Some of you still look unconvinced. So I want to sell the social determinants. As you can see from this slide, social and economic factors make up about 50% of a patient's health outcome, whereas clinical care only affects 20%. The lawyers are there to help with the 50%. In terms of outcomes, loss of data in terms of improved well-being for patients served by medical legal partnerships, loss of benefits, financial numbers, things to consider. Nothing in terms of death, but you know, very important. However, not all patients can get help. Why is this? There's a lack of funding. Legal services being publicly funded, federally funded, is not a very popular program. So part of the cell when you approach a legal services organization is to get them some funds. What happened to Hannah? She got her hole dropped. She worked with a lawyer. She preserved her housing. Um, at the end of the day, she felt very relieved. She actually called me in a couple weeks after all this happened and said, thank you so much. At this point, some of you might have a warm and fuzzy feeling towards lawyers. Some of you might even be excited. So how do you make this happen? I want to leave you with a few simple tips. First tip is to do some additional reading. 
The National Center for Medical Legal Partnerships has a number of publications and evidence on medical legal partnerships that can help you become better informed. If you think this is a good idea, get by and at your facility. Reach out to your local legal services organization, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Judges, feedback? Um, so thank you so much um, for that presentation. That is a very, um, I think, innovative and unexplored um, way to help our, our patients get what they really need, which oftentimes is not medical. Um, so thank you for that.